The Pokemon world is filled with many fantastical creatures. From the vast lands, to the depths of the seas, and the limitless skies, it truly is an amazing world. However, there's another amazing world with creatures just as fantastic. Your world. The planet is filled with amazing creatures that have unique and impressive abilities. My name is Ranger Rai, and I'm here to help bridge the gap between the Pokemon world and your world. So please, join me as we go through my Ranger Logs and we talk about Pokemon and their real-world inspirations. Frozen plains are beautiful snapshots of nature and home to majestic creatures. However, these sub-zero climates can be some of the most deadly due to the temperatures alone. Cold climates can be the most unforgiving in the case for survival, usually only allowing the strongest or most cunning creatures to survive. Today's Pokemon was voted on by my amazing Twitter followers, and you can vote too by following me on Twitter, at the Ranger Base. Now sit back as we discuss one of the craftiest, speediest, and possibly boldest designed Pokemon out there. Today we're talking about the Weavile line. Before we begin, be sure to like, share, and comment on the video, and follow me on Twitter and Twitch at the Ranger Base for all the latest updates. You can help decide future episodes and be involved with an amazing community as well as helping this channel grow. But for now, let's talk about Weavile. Let's start at the beginning of this line with Sneasel. It's such a uniquely designed Pokemon that it would be hard to accurately figure out what it really is, but after some digging, I found some solid answers. Sneasel is designed after both real-world animals and Japanese mythological creatures called yokai. Now, yokai are very interesting, as they are similar to American folklore like werewolves and jackalopes, except their origins are in Japanese roots and are centered much more around Japanese culture. To get more specific, Sneasel is based on the Kama Itachi or Windsickle Yokai. It's described as a weasel-like creature that travels in a whirlwind and would be the cause of mysterious cuts on the skin, among other things. These weasel creatures were said to have sickles for claws that were so sharp that they could slice up a person's skin without them even feeling it. Now, it's hard to have total accuracy of a Pokemon based off of lore and folktales, but I do know that Sneasel's design is based off of a mixture of a cat and a weasel-like creature called a Vivarade. More specifically, the species of Vivarade called the African Civet. It's a bit harder to notice now, but let's keep going and I'll show you just how similar they actually are. Now, when you look at Sneasel, the first thing you may notice are these large feather-like appendages on its back and head. These could be one of two possible things. Firstly, while they resemble and are called feathers, they might actually be part of their fur as an extension of their dorsal crest. It's this long row of fur on certain animals, which can be used for defense for some species. However, I'm not completely convinced that this is the only influence. You see, Sneasels are pack hunters, and are very cunning as well. They tend to form small packs with their own hierarchy and rules. It's possible that these Pokemon are based on a more native tribe, and their feathers could be seen as a form of identification and intimidation, as well as being a sort of trophy. You see, much like cats and weasels, Sneasel hunts in packs and steals eggs, as well as fights against bird-like Pokemon, or in this case, Pidgey. It's somewhat reasonable to believe that these feathers could be Pidgey feathers that have been claimed in battle and were styled into their crest. However, this is more of a theory than a fact. Now, civets are actually nocturnal creatures, so most of their hunting is done in the cover of the night. They are omnivores, which means they can eat both plants and animal matter, but they seem to enjoy the flavor of meat mostly. Only a small few of them are herbivores, but the ones that enjoy to eat meat prefer to eat things like eggs, small rats, and birds, much like their weasel cousins. Now, I found this fact interesting because I believe that this is what influenced its typing. A lot of people claim that dark types are evil. Even in Japanese, the dark type is the evil type. It doesn't mean that specific Pokemon are evil. It may be due to the fact that their natural predatory instincts could be considered more aggressive or evil in nature. Being nocturnal and stealing eggs from small animals might seem evil in most cases, but in nature, that's just the law of the wild. Needless to say, the dark type is incredibly misunderstood for creatures that are a bit more aggressive by nature. 
Now, before we discuss Weavile, I want to thank you all for following and supporting this channel. And if this is your first time here, please consider subscribing. I enjoy making content like this for you all, and subscribing helps this channel grow. Now, Sneasel is a special case for its evolution, as it requires a few steps. First, it needs to be holding an item called a Razor Claw. The Razor Claw boosts the user's critical hit chances, which is very useful in game. Then, it needs to level up at night. This comes back to its dark type design and nocturnal origins. On top of that, Sneasel is known for its sharp claws and powerful slashes, as well as its speed, making it a very deadly force. By using the Razor Claw at night, it undergoes a sort of training that improves its mastery over its skills and power. Usually, a Pokémon needs the help of a trainer to evolve with very specific conditions like this. However, so long as a Sneasel can find a Razor Claw and can train at night, it can evolve on its own, which is very impressive for a wild Pokémon. This seems to be some sort of rite of passage or test of strength for them. As they need to mature into their final form, gaining more power and speed, they first need to get their skills to the most powerful they can. On top of this, Weavile is a leader Pokémon, usually in charge of a small group of about 4 to 5, ordering their tribe where to go and instructing the others in combat for when they attract bigger prey. This is quite similar to a chief in charge of a small tribe, and it's reflected in its design as its feathers now resemble more of a headdress or some kind of crown. And remember how I said Sneasel will attack and steal eggs from Pidgey? Well, it wouldn't be too far off to imagine during its training, a Sneasel might defeat a few more Pidgey with its Razor Claw, and upon evolving, might add a few more red feathers to itself, almost like a trophy. However, this is more of a theory than a fact, but it is a pretty solid one that might require a deeper look at their anthropology. They are much quicker, hit a lot harder, and are even more tactile than their already crafty pre-evolved forms. One thing that is really fascinating about this line of Pokémon is the way that they can communicate. The Weavile line has a unique way of sending messages by making carving patterns into trees, rocks, and even ice for others to see. This is similar to hikers and their methods of marking paths or trailblazing to help other hikers stay on a safer path. However, the way Weavile does it is not just to warn, but to intimidate or to mark their territory. It's been categorized that Weavile has over 500 designs and patterns to use for marking areas, and we are still yet to decipher them all. A lot of early hunters and gatherers would use techniques to a similar degree, usually to help them communicate if there was danger or mark paths that they should follow. It's a form of communication that's still used to this day for many hikers. Just a quick environmental tip. While most trailblazing was done for the sake of survival, direction, and identifying turf, nowadays we use it primarily for direction and warning of dangerous areas. The most common method used to be that you would carve a symbol into a tree like an arrow or a distinct batch of lines that meant something. Now we use many different ways like posting a colored piece of wood or plastic to a tree, tying rope or caution tape, or using a type of paint or marking ink with specific lines that indicate directions. It's highly discouraged from using the old carving method because of the long-lasting damage it can have on the trees, and because markers might need to change or be moved, and having a permanent carving on a tree might confuse people. Plus, there's no reason to keep carving up trees and possibly opening them up to infections. Now, one really cool thing I realized when researching this Pokémon line was something really cool about its claws. Sneasel and Weavile are both known for their sharp claws, much like the civets, weasels, and felines they are based off of. However, their claws have this unique shape, very large and hooked at the end, like a sickle. I wondered why this shape felt so familiar until I started looking into facts about ice types. I noticed that their claws resembled ice climbing tools, mainly a tool called an ice axe. This tool is actually very impressive. While it has many uses like assisting with walking through difficult terrains, and as a belay for climbing up or down steep areas, its most well-known use is being able to carve into ice, rock, or most tough materials to carve in footings or even grip the side of a mountain in the event of a slip and fall. Sneasel and Weavile's claws take a large inspiration from this incredible tool. 
Now, while I did touch upon it a little bit earlier in the video, I think it's very important to understand their typing. Both Pokemon are Dark and Ice types. While one makes a lot of sense, the other was a bit more confusing for me. Now, I explained a bit about the Dark typing being called the Evil type in Japan. However, the meaning is kind of the same as both Dark and Evil can be used interchangeably. I also explained that being a Dark type doesn't make a Pokemon evil. Rather, the typing is a bit more of a description of their natural instincts and predatory natures. Sneasel and Weavile are very aggressive, and that's what they want. They steal their food from weaker prey, or they simply use their speed and sneaky stealth tactics to take down larger foes. They are smart and they know it. But there are also several animals that do similar things. Animals like vultures, who both intimidate enemies and will wait for them on the brink of death before beginning to eat. Or foxes, who also steal eggs and chicks from other birds to eat. This doesn't make the animals evil. They just have a different way of survival. As for its ice typing, this one was a bit harder to find an exact real world inspiration. When I make these videos, I try to relate Pokemon back to real animals and influences while also trying to keep it from fictional inspirations. However, it can't always be helped, especially in this case. Sneasel and Weavile are heavily inspired by the yokai Kama Itachi, which is described as a weasel-like creature with claws shaped like sickles and rides in on a whirlwind. I tried to find an animal that could possibly resemble an ice type, but most felines and viviradae live in warmer climates. However, viviradae do reside in Southeast Asia, which does have some mountain and forested areas, so the possibility of them appearing in snowdrop areas is possible, but it isn't their primary hunting terrain. As for the sickle claws, most feline and civet claws have a curved shape and are incredibly sharp, so that part actually connects well. The only stretch is the ice typing, which likely comes from the yokai lore. It is said that they arrive in on a cold wind, and without you even knowing, you will be covered in cuts and scratches without even feeling pain at first. Basically describing a delayed reaction to being sneak attacked, which describes the Sneasel line pretty well. That's probably why these Pokemon are only part ice type. The animal parts would be considered dark type, while the lore inspiration and their hunting adaptations would give them an ice typing. Regardless if the inspiration is animal or mythical, the Pokemon world is fascinating and much deeper than we are led to believe. But that's just another example of the close connections between the Pokemon world and the real world. Thank you so much for sticking around and supporting this channel, it really means a lot. I'm working on some new projects, and I have some more episodes coming up, so consider liking and sharing this video to help show some love and support. And as always, keep exploring trainers!